Thank you so much. Um, I think the team at Exchange for Media for having me here. And apologies, I know this is a session just before lunch. Uh, I'll try and make it as interesting as possible. Uh, I believe it kind of ran a little late. Um, so it was a very kind introduction. Yes, I have been at MasterCard for five years now, and I will predominantly talk about how um, the financial services industry and the payments industry uh, is embracing, uh, you know, mobile technology to reach out to consumers, digitally savvy consumers. But a lot of what I'm going to talk about also is true across industries because at the end of the day, people are people, consumers are consumers. Now, uh, for s many of you who follow advertising uh, and marketing, MasterCard's tagline, actually since 1997, and it's kind of coincidental, this is the 25th year of Priceless, but the, the consumer insight behind it is, there are some things that money can't buy, and the best things in life are often things that money can't buy. And it's interesting for the payments brand to go and say this. Because if you talk pure business, MasterCard, all the networks, all the banks make money when we use our credit or debit cards, right? We have something called the interchange fee, and that's where we make the money. So to actually go out and say the best things in life are actually things that you cannot buy uh, is very counterintuitive. It was actually in the US of the late 90s. It was a very countercultural nuance, but the fact that it stood for 25 years uh, says something. Um, but the fact is, if you look at it, and if you look at all of ourselves as people, uh, for those of us who are parents, like I'm a mom, uh, some of the experiences that you have in life simply cannot be bought with money. Uh, my younger son is five years old, and when he greets me when I get home from work, saying, Mama, I made this painting just for you, no amount of money in the world can, can buy that. And all of us have experienced things as children, as siblings, as friends, um, and there are some incredible moments. Now, you may wonder why I'm talking about all of this. The fact is, in the last two years, we've been through um, a pandemic that I pray to God none of us experiences again in our lifetimes. But what the pandemic has done is, from a consumer perspective, brought mobile technology front, center, and square in our lives. The fact is, today, Forget people like us. I mean, I am accused of living on my mobile phone, which is probably true. But even think of our parents. People who may not have used the internet earlier did not have a choice, right? We have young kids. Uh, my older son is 10, and he's pestering us uh, to get him a mobile. So what the pandemic has done is it has temporarily substituted real human connections with mobile-based connections. And while as the pandemic recedes and the world gets back to a quote unquote new normal, um, it is true that we all want to and we must get back to physical interactions. I mean, I'm very happy this event is happening physically and not virtually, uh, not having us glued to our computer screens. But what the mobile technology does fundamentally, and that's the first point I want to make, is it enables experiences to be more vibrant and it removes geographical boundaries from experiences. And let me give you a quick example. Um, MasterCard is sponsoring uh, the BCCI cricket matches, uh, and it's been a phenomenal experience to get out there, watch the match live. Now, obviously, every stadium has certain limitations of capacity, and I'm just taking sporting events as an example, and not everybody can be at the stadium when a match occurs. But what 5G immersive technology allows you to do is to experience it as close as possible to what actually happens. Again, is this a substitute for actually being there? Probably not. But as a marketeer, when you're looking at scale, when you're looking at reaching consumers beyond what your on-ground activation can reach, uh, this really helps you get there. And I think with 5G technology, with the seamlessness, with the convenience of it, it has certainly helped us uh, both as people, so if I'm interested in ballet, for example, I can sit here and watch a ballet performance in the US far, far more seamlessly and with far better quality than I could earlier. Uh, and, and as a marketer, it helps you disperse your message to a much wider set of, of the audience. The second big area, and again, something that we are focused on, um, is when people buy high value items. So for example, if you're decorating your house, it's something that's high involvement, you want to discuss it, you want to get opinions. Again, 5G technology has helped us reach out to and bring the experience live. So if I'm sitting here in Mumbai, I have, say, a designer who's in Hyderabad, for argument's sake. This enables the process of engaging with the product and therefore the purchase journey far more seamless than it would be if you just had to either exchange messages or exchange pictures. There is something about the audiovisual medium that you can now personalize and bring to each 
each person's house. And that's, I think, been the second area where a lot of brands across, uh, not just restricted to payments, but across the spectrum have kind of engaged, um, engaged in this. Couple of areas very specifically where uh, we, uh, where the payments industry has sort of been forced to innovate, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. Um, in the start of the pandemic, we found that obviously credit card issuance, and overall in India, as affluence levels go up, credit card issuance is skyrocketing. Nowhere near where it is in developed countries, but it's growing month on month. Unfortunately, come the pandemic, there was like a boom, just stop across the industry. And that was because traditionally, when you get a credit card, you fill up a form, you have an agent, they look at your documents, and then they give you a card. With the uncertainty that the world faced around COVID, and think back to April, May 2020, we had no idea when a vaccine was coming, what would happen. People were forced to get into eKYC, or online know your customer. And while it started with necessity, because you have to, I mean, a bank cannot issue a credit card without seeing people's documents, they realized that this is efficient, this is cost effective. You don't need to send people out to tier three, four, five towns. You can do it online. And guess what? It's not like delinquency suddenly went through the roof. So sometimes I think, and I think this is a realization across that we have, and sure, it's wise to be prudent. Nobody is saying, you know, throw caution to the winds and issue cards to whoever you want. But we realize that this helps all of us accelerate and ride the wave. Uh, and ride the wave of credit card issuance uh, in this country. And that obviously means more spends, it gives people a chance to you know, get an unsecured loan, and all of it. The second area, again, from a pandemic perspective, is the other side of payments, which is the place where you spend, which is the merchant. Now, again, all of you have seen those traditional point-of-sale machines, same situation as credit cards. You needed extensive documentation, you needed a person to visit, make sure there's the shop there, not there, etc. Again, come the pandemic, no one's willing to step out, shutters are down, so on and so forth. So again, go, get down to eKYC, we've got a bunch of fintechs working in that space. And again, it accelerates the process of getting more and more shops to embrace digital payments, makes it, seamer, uh, makes it smoother, seamier, and uh, faster for the industry overall. Uh, so these have been, I think, a couple of areas where uh, this industry and the pandemic, horrendous though it's been, has kind of forced innovation, which even after you know the pandemic has receded and life has kind of become normal, um, are places where uh, you know uh, we see uh, digital first consumers kind of being out there. I'll now quickly switch on to a second part of the digital first consumer experience, especially the age of millennials and the generations that follow. Now, as I said, this is an age of consumers who've grown up on the, on, the, on the mobile phone. I mean, they cannot imagine a time where mobile phones did not exist. I mean, I have seen this with, with uh, some of the kids of today. You see the old landline phone, and then they'll be like, oh my god, what is this? Like, is this a piece from a museum uh, kind of stuff? Um, that generation loves to voice their opinions, okay? And they rightly, and, and, and it's, it's a joy, you know, as someone who's older than that age bracket, it's a joy to see their views. And especially on topics of tremendous interest, like, for example, travel, uh, with the resurgence of travel, thankfully, you see a lot of what we call user-generated content out there for a brand which is into enabling priceless moments. Um, it's a great way to partner with some people and get that kind of real-time on the go content that would not have been possible had mobile networks been kind of you know patchy and glitchy. Um, likewise, you see some great and honest consumer reviews, right? The, the advantage of technology is as it becomes better and more fail safe, the better, uh, the better it is for people to honestly share what's going on. If you'd pardon my French, the ability to bullshit goes down a bit if you know the if, if the networks are clean and clear and people are allowed to a sort of voice and display what they actually see. So I think those have been some of the real benefits, some of the ways in which brands, MasterCard, and several others uh, have kind of tapped onto the new era of, uh, of 5G uh, and payments and so on. Um, the last bit, and I notice I have six minutes left, but I'll kind of try and stop a little, um, a little earlier and happy to take questions. So MasterCard's ethos, as I mentioned at the beginning of my, of my talk, 
is about enabling priceless moments. I mean, the joy, uh, as I said, for me as a mother, when my son comes and gives me that rather not so well-drawn uh, picture, which he says, Mama, is just for you. Or indeed, you know, the first ad we ran in India is about a son who takes his parents on an overseas, tra overseas trip. And the sheer joy on, you know, his parents' face when they kind of see, and it was Singapore, so it was not like it's the most exotic destination in the world, but just the sheer joy of enabling that is what MasterCard is all about. And let's face it, payments are ubiquitous. Sadly, we do spend a fair number of times each day. And nobody likes to think about the actual process of spending. If you think about it, nobody gets up uh, in the morning and says, hey, great, where can I use my credit card today? But what they do think of is where they are going to spend and what does that spending do for them. So for example, if I'm planning a vacation for the December holidays, I'm debating with a few friends with my husband, and then I say, yeah, I want to book XYZ place. It's the process of what you, what you get out of paying that really gives people joy if they are following their passions. So again, if you are a soccer fan and you want to watch the UEFA Champions League, can MasterCard enable you to get there and live your dreams? When people make payments, let's face it, every one of us wants it to be unobtrusive, effective, quick, seamless and absolutely safe. The last thing you want to hear is, oh, my card has been declined, or even worse to say, there's been a fraudulent transaction, please contact your bank, please block your card, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a very fine line that we have to walk. There is a lot of joy in spending on the things that you want, which is really to live your passions with the people whom you want to spend it with, whether it's your family or your friends or whoever. But at the same time, the process of payment has to be absolutely unobtrusive. You don't want it to take more than 30 seconds, and you want it to be absolutely safe. And the advantage, again, of 5G technology, and as mobile technology improves, it enables seamless payments in every part of the country. We've all been in situations, you're in a holiday in the Himalayas, and oops, OTP nahi aya. Hopefully, as 5G technology improves and spreads across the length and breadth of the country, that will hopefully be history. And that will mean more and more people embrace digital payments and continue to, to partake in it. Because the honest truth is, especially for the first time user, and I'll again talk of the previous generation, my mom in Chennai, for example, who had to use digital payments for the first time, one bad experience and they're gone for good. So it's imperative that, you know, as technology improves, and that to me is the greatest enabler of mobile technology for digital payments, which is to really make it accessible to everybody in tier six, seven, eight, and, you know, even in rural India. So that's what I had to share. Happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you. Sure. Sure. Good day. Yeah, sure. Hello, yeah, great ma'am, 5G is faster than 4G, great. <laughs> How about uh, call drop and uh, cyber crime? Even for 4G, there's a hard to stop the cyber crime yeah. because everything is linked. Aadhaar card is linked, that is linked, so all linked. I'm, I'm really, I, I don't know what are the measures taken by the government. Technology has limitations. I, I, I know about the technology. So what are your views on these two things, yes. especially the card? When I give my CVB number and all, the, 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 the cyber crime is going to be faster, my wallet is going to get faster empty. Okay. Uh, so absolutely appreciate your concerns and see cyber crime or any other crime for that matter is a reality. And I'll be honest and say as much as there are great brains working to keep digital payments safer, there are also equally intelligent people working on the next way of, next way of uh, you know, siphoning off yours and mine and everybody else's wallet. Having said which, I would just say a couple of points. I think the government and the RBI and all the, play, uh, the players in the payment space, be it banks, be it fintechs, or networks like MasterCard, are working very closely to make payments as safe as possible. And a recent example is the RBI's directive on tokenization, which is nothing but storing your card one time at a merchant, let's say Flipkart, and your 16-digit card number is then masked. So even if somebody hacks into it, let's say despite all the safeguards that you have in place, some criminal manages to get there, they will have a set of numbers which have no meaning. And it's encrypted at the back end. 
Is anything foolproof? Sadly, no. But I think there is a lot of push on the government and, uh, to, uh, and the RBI and especially the current ruling regime to really make this safer because that's the only way digital payments are going to grow. The second point um, I would say is MasterCard and a lot of players are working on the latest technologies using artificial intelligence, using machine learning, and so on to make, to try and stop breaches before they happen. Because from a consumer experience perspective, yeah, once your card is, and I had a fraudulent transaction myself a couple of weeks ago, had to block my card, had to reissue it. It's not as, as fun as trying to block it before it happens. And I think that's the second one. Sorry? Copy the bandwidth issue. Yeah. Um, no cross questions. No. Uh, no, so see, there, there is, yeah, and as you said, sometimes the fact that an OTP doesn't come, right, if there are bandwidth issues, it leads to, uh, it leads to criminals having a field day. Uh, we have known of cases where somebody calls and says, oh, I'm calling from so-and-so bank, or I'm calling from the RBI. Okay, please give me your, uh, you know, give me your uh, card details and we'll make the, pay the payment. But that brings me, uh, sir, to my most important point. Technology is there, policy is there, regulation is there, everyone's working towards it. But finally, you need consumer education. Because no amount of technology can save anyone if people fall for this, oh, I'm calling from the RBI, please give me your details. That's it, matter over. Because you are then literally opening, you're handing them your locker and saying, please take it. So that is, again, something, and as a marketing function lead, that is a large part of my work, to educate people. Just uh, one final question from the lady out here, quick. Can we just get the mic passed? Thank you. Yeah, just allow us a moment. Yeah, because... If you could just have your introduction to Mansi, and then we can quickly do it. Yeah. My name is Shalini. I'm from Lakshya Media Group. I just wanted to ask you that uh, pandemic has also changed the way people spend, right? Uh, uh, we have UPI, uh, Google Pay, which are digital different formats which has come up. So how has that... Uh, you know, affected MasterCard because I'm sure there has an effect. So, of course it you know, has. so how it has that? I just want to know that. Of course it has. And again, as I said, we have a government which is very, very committed to driving digital payments and moving India a little bit away from cash. I don't think it'll ever be completely away because cash is very cultural to us as, as a nation. Uh, but yes, UPI has been a great um, sort of form factor of digital payments. But remember one thing, and I'll share this fact with everyone in this room, despite all of the growth of digital payments, 85% of transactions in India today are still done in cash. So there is monumental headroom for this industry to grow. And I think the more people educate, the more people realize, make, make, uh, the more players make people realize the benefits of digital payments, I think it's only good for all of us. And that's really kind of the common um, sort of goal that, that we all have. Um, yes, spending has grown. Digital payments overall grew monumentally in the pandemic. As I said, um, you didn't have an option because physical stores were not there. You had to sit at home and order. Uh, I can still remember my mother cursing, saying, why, why is, you know, why am I having to do this? But it is what it is, and yes, so I think there's enough room and more for UPI, for cards, for all the fintechs, all the modes of payment to all coexist. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. Thank you.